Now, yo, what's up, everybody? It is Emilio and Christian back together again. Woo! What's up, Christian? Ha-ha. How's it going? Hello. I am happy that we're out of the year 2020. I was, I wasn't expecting it. wasn't expecting that we were gonna have another year. So I'm really excited <laughs> about that. We've, prob- we've probably got one more good year. Um, uh, before it's all over but oh that was very negative say it out loud uh well anyway <laughs> while we have this year to go let's talk some characters so uh you know this is our uh normally chris and i roll characters uh with friends using random prompts and parameters but the last month we have been rolling characters individually every day and have developed a uh, group of 31 different characters who uh, we put together and we also got this whole saga going. So Christian, can you uh, tell us a little more about that? Give us a recap. Sure. So, um, you know, we were going just like willy nilly for the first 15 days of 31 days of character creation. Um, And then at day 16, while uh, yours truly was broadcasting from my tub, um, I created a character um, Slate Gentle Fist. And Emilio had the brilliant idea of building off of that character. And then next thing we knew, we were building back and forth from day 16 uh, through 31, day 16 through 31. And uh, this sort of story that we built uh, happened to have a whole bunch of Dragonborn, thanks to Emilio continually rolling a one for ancestry. Yeah. Uh, and these all, uh, almost all of them, became part of the Gentle Fist clan. And so we started to uh, call this the Gentle Fist Saga. And the Gentle Fist Saga takes place in a city called Palandra, which is a multicultural city. Um, and the Gentle Fists are a clan who are known for um, weapons deals and trading. And uh, we have a number of sort of members of that clan, some of whom have sort of broken off. Um, one of them was Slate, who uh, thought he was sort of becoming a freedom fighter. Um, And then he had a sibling, Tenazar, who was a a good guy, Paladin, and uh, some other uh, Gentle Fist folks. In any case, um, they became sort of our neutral party in this conflict where, you know, they want trade to happen. They want to be able to sell their arms. And also, you know, they're members of of that group who branch off into some of our uh, opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. The good guys... Um, led by Tenazar, the paladin, um, as well as a monk called uh, Janward. Um, And they have been sort of uncovering a plot by uh, our not-so-good guys, led by a, I believe, sorceress named Divinia. And Divinia, from her sort of uh, area of Palandra, which I think you were calling Old Town, Emilio? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, Old City. So, yeah, Old Town, I think. Oh, yeah, Old City, Old Town. You know, she has been building up um, uh, her forces in order to sort of overthrow um, this council, which runs Palandra. And so she's been freeing, you know, this har- these people like this horrible prisoner named Grey Death, who's this, like, evil um, druid... Uh, she's recruiting sort of, you know, nasty other uh, magic wielders like this guy called the Eviscerator, a former um, gladiator. And uh, she's uh, intercepted weapons that uh, the Gentlefists were bringing into um, the in, into Palandra. Mm-hmm. And so what's happened is, uh, you know, as we've been introducing characters, um, there has been, you know, a showdown or two. But basically... Davinia is doing pretty well. Yeah. And uh, she's on the march with her forces. She's just taken down a monk who was attempting to, um, you know, just jump in and try to disrupt what was going on. The the eviscerator took care of uh, that monk. And so now we're trying to figure out with our conversation here, what the heck happens in this world? And um, so I'm wondering, Emilio, if you're having thoughts around which of these factions are currently the strongest and how we're going to proceed from there. Yeah, I'm 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 just I'm reflecting on my last 
uh, character, which was a, a little bit out there. It was like late on New Year's New Year's Eve when I uh, recorded it. Well, I do want to say I love the idea of a sea ranger. Me I thought too. That was super- yeah, I thought that was really cool. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. I, I was uh, that was inspired, I guess. But um, yeah. but yeah, so I'm thinking about sort of you know this battle is coming to a head, right? Where now the the all the you know, folk from the ocean um, have come into town. And so we've got these two forces that are coming together. Um, uh, but I don't really have a great sense of, yeah, w- which side might be more powerful. You know, are there other uh, things that, you know, people that could, you know, could Mandresa and the Gentle Fist, you know, merchant group get involved in one way yeah. or another, right? Like, um uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of things at play. I'd I'd be interested to maybe roll some dice and create some randomness out of this, um, and see if we come to that. But what about you, Christian? What do you have any kind of ideas? Well, you know, when you were talking about sort of you know the gentle fists and and what's going to happen with them, what if Divinia? So she's got weapons, she's got you know baddies, she's got forces, including Slate, who's sort of fallen under her spell. He thinks that. I mean, not technically a spell, but he thinks that he's part of a freedom fighting group of people, even though he's actually being manipulated. Um, you know, so she's got this group of people and I think she's marching out of her hideout. And it may be that one of her first stops actually before going to the council is sort of the gentle fist compound hmm. because there's they're going to there's going to be weapons there. There's going to be gold there. You know, they're a big merchant family in this city. And I could imagine that she wants to kind of try to swiftly go there and just like take out the clan and take that money. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think the time for subtlety is over. Yeah. Davinia is not trying to make any more moves. Um, uh-huh. So I like that idea. And I think it's not going to be as easy for Davinia as she thinks, because I think when you think about like arms dealers, like they tend to know how to protect themselves. Right. They tend to have like security forces. Yeah. Right? Not, not just like a bodyguard, but like a, like a yeah. little army almost. Um, yeah. Yeah. Private and, army. And obviously well equipped. Um, so mm-hmm. I could see her making a move on the gentle fist and then we have some kind of conflict now i wonder if and this might be a place to roll some dice if uh-huh. if divinia would try to first talk uh mandresa into joining her well oh no to send slate to yes talk right yes to, uh, to yes right yes she that's her that's her sort of uh her trump card or her like you know inside uh-huh. man kind of deal um yes, totally that's great so yeah so so the question then is can slate convince divinia and so no can he c- convince mandresa uh, mandresa yes is that a persuasion role well i so i don't remember you know the stats for all these different characters and i don't think we took them down anywhere so i'm thinking more like dueling d20s okay now, I think that in this sort of uh, D20, I think that probably Slate gets like a plus one or plus two in the sort of dueling D20s uh, in, in, in trying to persuade Mendresa because he's part of the family mm-hmm. and because he's neutral. You know, she, I think she is truly neutral sure. um, as a character. And so I, I think that um, I think she's willing to hear him out and I think we should roll for it. Yeah, I think that's right. And I, I think um, I do remember that Mandresha was very uh, hi, had very high stats generally. Um, OK, but I don't think that necessarily that may actually make her more likely to, you know, she may see this as an opportunity. Yeah. And I, I think that, like, if we were trying to play by their stats, like, I think you can get hairy pretty quickly. So I, I'm just trying to think about, like, what bonus does the circumstance does sure. do the circumstance? you know what i mean sure and the circumstances are her brother is coming to her door and says hey listen 
I don't know what 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 does he say? Does he say, "Hey, listen, there's an opportunity here for us to get on the you know side of these folks who are about to take this city for the people"? Because you know that's what he thinks is happening, right? Um, and uh, is that like what he's attempting to persuade her on? I think he's. I think he. Uh, yes, and he has to make the business case. And I don't think Slate is great at making the business case, but maybe he, right. maybe there's someone else. Maybe uh, you know. Uh, it's not the eviscerator probably, but like, is there anyone on that side that would, you know, there is, there's a neutral there. There's somebody who's, who's like, a, Oh, I don't remember their background, but they, they were like sort of um, driving the cart that had the eviscerator in it and uh, decided right. to like, yeah. And helped out uh, Divinia's forces. Cause they sort of sold themselves to the highest bidder. That person had a lot of high stats. Yeah, that could so so yeah. I think that so maybe Slate and whoever that was like a former monk too. I think they they come to Mandresa. They yeah. say you know Slate makes his emotional appeal. You're my sister. We're uh-huh. gonna make this place better. And then uh-huh. you know Mandresa's all business. So she's like, well, what's in right. it for me? Uh, and then the other character will be like, well, hey, look, we're outfitting an army. This is just our first stop. Uh, exactly there's the, the other characters like look how much they gave me just to like help them out with this gray death situation right. yeah right i'm, I'm a neutral party yeah he doesn't he doesn't mention gray death he's like with this prisoner transfer situation because like everybody knows gray death is sort of like bad news yeah. so he's like, <laughs> he's like playing um so yeah so yeah. i think yeah let's do that plus two and then i'll just roll a a, a d20 for um so if your role is higher than you, th- then you get your way. way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right, so am I roll? So I'm rolling for Divinia's forces. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Amelia, you're in trouble. No, Christian, you're in trouble. Okay. Well, I just rolled an 18 plus two. Now 20. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? That's a tie. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So they're at a standstill. So yeah. This is like. A stalemate here. So, like, yeah. Mendesa, she, like, hears all of this, and she says, yeah, you know, I think that um, this does sound like it's it's it could be a, a pretty good business move, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to have to sit this one out. I think that you guys are on your own with this. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'll wait and see what happens. Yeah, does that, that sound like what happens here? That sounds like Mandresa. I'm going to let the dust settle. You know, when there's yeah. blood in the streets, you buy property or something. Right? Isn't that the old, like, evil expression? Like, Yeah, that's the evil expression. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Now, the question is, how does how do Davinia and the Eviscerator and Grey Death how do they take that news? Because mm-hmm. you know Slate he says, okay, well we gave it our best, and you know I can depend on my sister to do the right thing. You know once everything is said and done, so he comes back and he's reporting back. Let's say he reports back to Grey Death sure. or the Eviscerator. Evis- he reporting I think back? Eviscerator was was the okay. lead for that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he reports back to the Eviscerator. Yeah. Eviscerator, you know. I mean, he's he only sees Slate as their way in to mm-hmm. getting all this money and weapons and additional exactly. forces. So how does he react when Slate reports this news? Yeah, I think I think I know what you're getting at here, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think they're going to go on the offensive a little bit. Um, so they probably keep Slate back and then send maybe Grey Death and the Eviscerator or some, you know, whoever the, the muscle is to kind of try to convince, convince Mandresa yes. to go along with things. Well, and I think that like immediately the Eviscerator gives that, uh, that other person, the former monk, the order to, you know, take um, Slate captive because Slate mm. is weak and not a very good fighter. And this is not, this is not even a problem. Yeah. And so takes him captive and he says, all right, well, you've outlived your usefulness, boy. And uh, takes him captive. And uh, now it's a hostage situation. Right. And are they are they openly, are they saying to Mandresa, look, you you know, you Slate will, we will kill Slate if you don't go along with us? Or are they? Yeah. I mean, I think like the first knock on the door is the carrot and the second knock on the door is the stick, yeah. basically. Uh, uh, so they, they come back and they come back with maybe um something uh audacious like you know 
maybe they launch a, a boulder at, at, the, at their compound or something like that, yeah, right? To yeah. let them know what's happening. Um, it's it'd be it'd be kind of cool if Grey Death showed up and just like killed all the plants around or something. Uh, like you know, like yeah, they've got a garden that. out front or something. And... Oh yeah, he comes over and like so basically, there's like you know this. Uh, a small boulder, you know, crashes into uh, uh, the side of their compound or something like that. And, you know, uh, Mandresa, who's just sort of dismissed them and thinks everything's cool. She's now come back out to her balcony and she looks out and sees that they haven't moved on. And not only that, but she kind of eerily notices that all of these sort of vines and flowers that are out on her balcony, they just start shriveling up and like turning to dust basically yes okay and that's a great sorry i just said so she knows something's up that's a great sort of like cliffhanger for that scene and then like we could jump to what tenazar and janwood are doing because i actually would love to bring them into this i think this is actually where the final battle is going to happen Oh, it's, interesting. It's, it's feeling like it's it has to happen at the gentle fist like business office. Okay, yeah, That's... I like that. Okay, so so what do you think? How are they how how are they catching wind of the movement here? Is this sort of one of our um, spy people has sort of? I mean, so we did have uh, one of the monks who was carried off by our spy person. Have they mm-hmm. gone to the monastery where Janwar and, and, and his tenants are there as well? I think. Uh, I think the monks are gathering their forces, right? Their their okay. job is to protect, um, and so yeah, probably the 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 you know there's there's a couple different characters that, that have been sort of either spying or gathering information, and um, mm-hmm. and so certainly the good guys you know good guys know with that stuff's going on, and yeah, I, I I imagine that they're in their separate areas at the moment. Uh, the mm-hmm. monks are at their you know, monastery and they start to gear up the paladins Mm -hmm. probably, they don't actually have like a a place. They, they're sort of just, the paladins are all folks that just kind of came together. um, Yeah. yeah. They don't headquartered really in Palandra, which makes sense then that they would be at like the gentle fist home because Tenazar might've invited them. Um, Mm -hmm. The, the grandfather (laughs) character, I can't remember their name. You Um, think they're already there? Just the paladins not the monks right 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 just yeah just like maybe tenazar and upset and a couple other so people if that were the case though i think that they probably would have counseled mendresa against sort of even talking to these people i feel like that they're not like they're there maybe well so mandresa could have her own separate home and whatever like okay. maybe okay, yeah, so, okay what was the yeah it's a compound after all what was the 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 grandparents' name? I can't remember. Um, I think the grandparent is 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 has a home, and that's where they are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Okay. Um, cool. Because Tenazar doesn't have a home, so uh, that's the only person that sort of would gather folks. But yeah, so they gather. You know, it's there's not too many of them, um, and I think that they kind of have the same thought. Let's go talk to Mandresa and see if she will back us up. Okay, sure. But they get there a little later. Um, yes. Uh, I, I don't think it's a stretch to think that Janward and Tenazar would have figured out a way to communicate with each other um, if they know about each other. I, I guess, yeah, so they, they had the encounter with Grey Death, right? So they sort of were already uh, in the same place at one point. Wait, wait, I don't know. Wait, wait, tell me something. Tell, give me. A, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that they. I'm not sure that they have like connected with each other in in any sort of meaningful way up to this point. I think. Um, I think what could happen is, uh, you know, so Grey Death is, you know. Uh, He's using his foul, you know, magics to sort of mess with with what's going on at the gentleness compound. And um, I think that, you know, if we do have our paladin friends staying with the grandparent, that makes a lot of sense that they would immediately sort of, you know, smell that evil and head over to Mandresa. Yeah. And then I think that um, uh, they're... Sorry, can okay. I can I jump in? I'm sorry. Um, sure. Yeah. 
I think it, it'd be a really cool scene if, yeah, if, like you were saying, they they recognize that something's up. Tenazar and those folks, yep. they start uh-huh. to head over to Mandresa. Yeah. There's an encounter, and then Janward and the monks will appear at some later. Like, they, they may be a little farther away. It may take them longer to get there. Maybe they hear the boulder crashing into, you know, they hear the sound of, like, you know, a building being hit with a <laughs> giant rock uh, and start heading that way. And so we get these staggered waves of people coming to uh, what is, is going to be the final battle. Well, I think that, yeah, even to sort of, you know, bring a little more agency into it, I think that, you know, Mendresa would know, like, that she should contact the monastery and the monks of the monastery when evil stuff starts going down, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, the gentle fists could even be major donors, you know, to the monastery, right? And so, like, they know that they can call on them, something like that. But, you know, she sees, Ill, you know, ill magics, and she thinks, okay, my security forces are not quite going to be up to the task of fighting this and so these paladins are coming over and they're talking to her and uh they maybe are filling her in on you know tenazar her her you know sibling is filling her in on you know who these people are and then she knows that she should reach out to the monastery in order to get them over there does that is that is that too is that does that make sense it does there's a is there's a little i have a question about whether yeah. Mandresa and Jan and the, and the monks would interact with each other peacefully, because I do think that they might. I don't know. I don't know if, if like an arms dealer would be welcomed by a, you know an, or a monkish order, a mon- monastic order, or not. Um, it, it does. Feel, I mean, it does feel like a little bit of a stretch. I agree for her to have a relationship with them, but I guess the question is like. Like, so they could just hear, you know, that there's commotion, decide that and and figure out that, oh, that's maybe where we should bring all of our monks over to. Though that seems like a bit much. So I'm just looking for that kernel of like, how would the monks know? How would Janward know? Like, okay, this is it. We got to get there with our forces. That's what. That's what I want to know. How how would they know that? Maybe I mean maybe it's that you know we've already established that they have sort of eyes and ears all around town. I mean it's it's not crazy to think that they would you know watch uh, Davinia's troops moving yeah. towards the the Gentle Fist business offices and and say hey like it looks like something's going down. We are they, you know they've already sort of taken the old town and. Yeah. Uh, that's like open, you know, there was a, a, I think a monk that was inside and got out. So they know that that's happening. Um, so, I, so I'm sort of thinking like, okay, so like, you know, scene one, um, Divinia does the whole, like Slate comes to Mandresa, then they mm-hmm. attack, right? That's the, the it's like it's taken hostage, they attack. That's scene one. Scene yeah. two is um, at the grandparents' house and the, yeah. the uh, paladins have gathered and they're uh-huh. kind of just talking. They know something's up. But they're like, what do we do? We need to figure this out. Let's go talk to Mandresa and see if she will be willing to commit some of her forces to our side. They don't know that maybe that Divinia is marching on Mandresa at that moment. So they mm-hmm. go there. And, and when they get there, uh, they see that Divinia is there. But maybe they can still like get inside and... Uh, you know, well, I imagine they're all in the same walled compound, so mm-hmm. they're going from one home within that compound to yeah, another. Home. Sure, but I think that's the problem. yeah. So they they meet with Mandresa, and then um, as they're having that meeting, the monks show up. Okay, well, I want to roll for the monks showing up. Okay, okay, all right. What do you what do you think it's a roll? Well, so I think uh, I think it's just going to be a d twenty. And they like assuming they do have eyes and ears, or you know, they do. I mean, not assuming they do have eyes and ears around the city. And this is like, so I would say it's like a, a d20 plus two, and uh, we have to beat 10. Okay, roll it. Re- do you want to roll it or, or should I roll? No, it? you roll it. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, it's a 14 or 12 plus two, so it's a 14. Okay, so they do sort of see that there's this commotion. They see that these are Divinia's forces and they're going to head on over. Now, how, 
what happens here? Are they um, going to try to go to the gentle fists and try to like join forces with them? Or are they going to try to engage the uh, Divinia's forces on their own? Because as you were saying, I don't think that they're like buddies with the gentle fists. So what do you think happens here? I think that's exactly it. I think they, they confront Divinia's forces at the, you know, in the streets in front of the okay. gentle fist compound. And, yeah. and then as that conflict takes place, you know, yeah. Tenazar and them are like, I don't know, watching from a window up on a balcony, something. And they're like, they, so it, actually it's, you know, it's very, you know, dramatic movie fight scene, battle scene yeah. where like, you know, maybe Divinia's forces start to overwhelm the monks, but then Tenazar and like a couple paladins show up and like help to turn the tide. But then like someone else shows up from Divinia's, it's like all that back and forth. And, uh, I mean, it's like what they did in Lord of the Rings all the time, right? Like. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, this is a situation where you can imagine the monks coming from one direction and you can imagine sort of uh, the gentle fist compound being over here and Divinia's forces are in the middle. Yeah. And so they're actually getting pinned between the, mon the monastic forces and the gentle fist compound. And now at this point, you know, Mandresa, she's not messing around and neither, you know, is Tenazar. Yeah. And so they're going to start, you know, from their fortified position, mm -hmm. they're going to start opening fire. Maybe Tenazar is like, oh, that's not good enough for me. And I got to go rescue my brother. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's going to like, you know, he's going to just go into the fray with the other paladins. And so I'm imagining now we're seeing like kind of just like chaos in the streets as the monks are engaging and you see like, you know, uh, the eviscerator is just like tearing through people yeah. uh, as the eviscerator does. And, you know, Janward is like, just like, you know, just like using her fists and hand and feet to like, you know, uh, unload on people. But it's like, it's a disaster in the streets right now. What are you thinking? I love that. Yeah, it's okay. chaos, open, open, you know, open warfare in the streets. Yeah. Um, and I think despite you know being kind of attacked from both sides i think divinia does have the upper hand here they've just she's just got so many powerful people on her side and, weapon. and the and weapons exactly um so you know i think the the battle starts to turn their way um and it, i mean i don't know much about like tactics you know combat tactics but I, I I could see like maybe the monks kind of working their way, to, seeing that Tenazar and those folks are you know fighting back. Maybe they try to you know join forces, but they get pushed back into the compound, and so now they're kind of almost in like a siege um, where they've had to sort of retreat back into the into the gentle fist uh, walls behind the gentle fist walls. Well, I think though even before something like that happens, I want a confrontation between Tenazar and the Eviscerator. Okay. With okay. Slate's life at stake. Oh man! Are right, you going to make me roll if for Slate living or dying? <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I think's happening. So Tenazar, you know, he is motivated to get to his brother. He knows what's going on. He knows that these, uh, you know, Divinius forces will, you know, they'll they'll kill his brother if he doesn't go. So he, you know, can imagine him sort of like cutting his way through, you know, various henchmen and valiantly sort of like fighting until he gets to the eviscerator who's maybe waiting for him, you know, by a cage. And you see Slate is sort of in this cage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tenazar sort of holds his sword and points at the eviscerator and the eviscerator just sort of like cackles maniacally. <laughs> and th like, this is, this is what's up. So, what I want to do is roll for who wins this fight. Yeah, you. I think that's what we need to do. Um, okay, so do we have any advantages here for either side? I would, I would say maybe you know Tenazar gets a plus one because he's fighting uh, for his brother here, but I don't know what you think. Uh, emotion can work positively or negatively, I think, but. Um... Uh, good point. Uh, I like that idea. I think, you know, I like the noble sort of the call to, you okay. know, fight for good. Um, okay. Gives you some kind of advantage. All right. So uh, I, am I rolling? Do you, do you, let me roll for the Eviscerator. You you should roll for Tenazar. Yeah, those are our characters. Um, yeah. Uh, rather than a bonus, why don't we do advantage, disadvantage? Um, oh, okay. So All right. You can just roll a straight 
whatever, and I'll roll two. Okay, sounds um, good. Do we just do want to do d twenty oppose d twenties? Yeah, let's just oppose d twenties. Okay, let's give the eviscerator a plus a plus two for just being a badass. So wait, he's gonna get a plus two, but your guy's gonna get an advantage. But I'll get an advantage. What yeah. And oh, so now we'll finally answer the question: Which is better, five e or three point five? <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so here it comes. Oh no, Emilio! Okay, well, I, I, my, my better roll is a seventeen. <laughs> oh, buddy, I have a net twenty. Of course, of course. Oh man, and I'll, I, I'll just, uh, I don't want to move my webcam because then I have to reset it up again. But I show you on the table, it's yes, a twenty. I, I believe it. <laughs> oh, okay. What Emilio. Well, so yeah, Tenazar comes in and he's, you know, yeah. he's making a good fight of it and uh uh you know, really I think probably has to fight through a bunch of people to get to the oh, eviscerator. Yeah, he, had to, he he had to it, it was tough work to get to the eviscerator. But, you know, despite that, gets there and mm -hmm. and then it's a it's a I mean, 17 versus 20, right? It's a very close <laughs> 22. 22 yeah yeah it's it seems close at first close at first and then yeah. you just see the eviscerator like little by little overwhelming poor tenazar he, you know you can sort of imagine like um tenazar he's used to formal fighting but uh the eviscerator is used to dirty fighting right, exactly. and so, they're in the streets he, exactly so like you know, Tenazar is coming in with his sword or something like that, and you see the eviscerator just like getting up close and just like you know stabbing his fingers into his ribs or something, right? Like, He's like throwing dirt like, in his face, like yeah, and like you know, it's 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 an ugly fight when it comes down to it. And uh, at the end of it, Tenazar falls. How does he fall, Emilio? He uh, he he's losing. Tenazar is losing. Okay. Yeah. and injured and uh -huh. is is going to like try a last desperate kind of hail mary attack uh -huh. and, and, and as tenazar does that uh i think slate like like cries no. out or something or oh, wait, okay okay like like uh uh and and he just like glances over for a second and and the eviscerator right like like hacks his sword away with the vis this trader has an axe, right? I don't know what he has. He's I, terrifying. I, he just he just grabs the <laughs> sword with his hand and takes it. He, well, he's also he's a magic wielder too. Oh yeah, she's like a warlock or something, or he's he's some he he's something. Yeah, he warlock. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, a, a number of things that the administrator can do, but maybe yeah, maybe it's a it's a spell that turns. I think I think he doesn't bat the sword away. I think he catches the sword. Sure. And it, it like just as though he's catching, you know, a feather, and crumples it. And and it, let's make it real warlocky. So let's say okay. instead of like killing, instead of like stabbing or cutting Tenazar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uses like some kind of horrible death spell or like yeah, like grabs him by the... exactly, yeah, <laughs> touches him somewhere on his head or face and his eyes just like blacken, like uh, Tenazar's eyes blacken and s black smoke starts rising out of them. Ooh. And then he just falls a husk to the ground, Slate calling out, crying his brother's name to no avail. Yeah, yeah. And Tenazar is down. And, and so, so that's like, that signals the retreat then. Yes, I like that. That signals the retreat of the paladins. That's their, you know, leader basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, their general, and so they head back. But on the other side of this conflict, though, are the monks. Yeah. And and I want to say they're going up against Grey Death. Sure. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay. okay. And so Jan. So what, now we have this other conflict where I think it's Janward and Grey Death. Right? Or is this going to be our face off here? uh let's do that yeah um just okay. looking at i'm trying to <laughs> trying to remember something it doesn't matter let's just yeah, yeah that, I, yes. know. I don't know who the other characters are who that's knows? it yeah that's it then no, that is a great that's a great uh and that's it's your character and my character again i know except now my character's a good guy <laughs> um, um well janward's a badass if i remember janward right. is super badass yeah. she's like 
head of the monastery, you know, or not the head of it, but she's like a high ranking, you know, monk. She's she's got a lot of skills. And Grey Death though is just straight up terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Grey Death is pretty skilled also. What's well, a great it's a great yeah. fight. I don't know, should they just be evenly matched in this? Um I think they're probably evenly matched. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh I mean so, what, so how do they find each other on the battlefield? Well, Greydeath is doing magical stuff. Greydeath is, yeah. is 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 maybe almost like in a trance uh or not maybe not so much in a trance but is focused on like like horrible like spells and just like like just kind of like yes, going maybe. around the battlefield and slightly hovering as he's moving through just like you know like vines and shit maybe are coming out of the ground i don't know yeah, like yeah. oh yeah it's a it's a yeah, nightmare okay. uh yeah. to tendrils, see like tendrils are coming just, yeah it's horrifying all around him and 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 there's just, almost like, like a um the opposite of light emanating from him so just everything darkens as he sort of moves through and like things are shriveling up and dying and like people are shriveling up and dying as yeah. he's moving. it's like yeah it's horrifying so what does janward how when and how does janward kind of notice and react so on this side of so again this is you know they're fighting in the streets here and so i think um gray death is maybe having no problem grabbing like civilians you know non-combatants and just like you know like you can imagine him like grabbing you know like a merchant you know a, a, who, from their cart and like holding them up and just like you know taunting the monks as he's just like you know squelching the the lives from these people yep. and so she detects that this is where sort of the nasty stuff is going down and janward's a hero that's exactly where she is going to be heading and so she sees this darkness she hears the sort of like civilians calling out and that's where she starts running does that sort of seem reasonable enough yeah i like that i like that i i wonder if um hmm this might be too much of a wrinkle. I want I want Janward to I want the monks to clear a path for Janward somehow. Um, oh, okay. I don't know. I, I feel like it's just like a cool moment where like I, they're they're I, fighting I, as a team. Yes, yes, they are fighting as a team. Um, yeah, I think like you know Janward sort of she sees what's going on sort of you know down this like boulevard or whatever. And uh, she sort of like signals to her monks, you know, and they like <laughs> they assemble around her and she like just points at um, Grey Death and they just, you know, they know exactly what to do. They just start like clearing a path and yes. also also, you know, bring civilians off of the streets and like, you know, protecting them as well. So clearing a path of enemy combatants as well as civilians. Awesome. Yeah. So then uh, I think Janward can charge forward. Yeah. She's just running. She's just going to run directly yes. at him. Yes. And like maybe even like run and then like run up along a wall for a moment uh -huh. and like you know, flipping and running and sliding and all these like really cool things. Oh, it's so cool. Greatest is like, oh. Greatest notices after a moment um, and yes. starts like launching spikes and projectiles, but none of it's hitting, right? She's yeah, Janward just running through it. Yeah. Like, exactly. She's like, Phew. So like just dodging and like batting aside. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I want to give Janward a bonus here, actually. Okay, we're giving Janward a bonus. A plus one bonus. Yeah, just give a plus one. Okay. Straight D twenty for Grey Death. Oh, I don't and, want Grey oh, Death. Oh, okay, shit. Okay. Yeah? I just want to say Grey Death is. Oh, are we rolling? It seemed like you were rolling. I was going to. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to say there's a moment where Grey Death realizes that his unit you know, projectiles are not doing anything. And he just smirks. <laughs> he just waits for Janward to get there. Exactly. All right, here we go. Oh, God! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! I, well, so I don't have a great roll, but it's not terrible. This I have a 12. Oh, oh, I rolled a 3. Oh, no! <sighs> what Man, is you know, if I, was, uh, right. if I was DMing this, which technically I'm yeah. not, but... Uh, I would I would give you advantage, but I, that, that's just me being a wimpy DM. No, no. I mean, we got to let the dice roll where they may. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think of uh, how how this goes awry for her. So she's running toward him. She's dodging. She's like, you know, 
walking on wall, running on walls. And that smirk, that is telling us that Grey Death has something else up his sleeve. Yeah. And so she's coming and she, you see her just sort of like, you can see her, she, you imagine her just sort of launching up in the air and he's slow motion, Zack Snyder, horrible. <laughs> I hate Zack Snyder, but anyway, it kind of looks like that. Just a slow motion and you see her leg coming around for a kick and then Grey Death, what does he do? He interrupts this in a really brutal fashion. What does he do? Well, I think I think if I think Grey Death in particular, but any of the evil characters are mm -hmm. not fighting fair. And mm -hmm. right, so mm -hmm. like Janward is looking for a, a real fight, and uh, Grey Death has some kind of trap set. Um, maybe it's a magical mm -hmm. trap, some kind of ward or something. Um, mm -hmm. But it mm -hmm. activates just before that foot lands. And yeah, I don't know if it ensnares Janward or just just launches her back somehow. Um, I think no. I mean, his stuff is all about sort of, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like entropy. Yes. And so, like when she when her foot like makes contact with this ward that he has around himself, like it instantly like blackens mm, and rots. It's like. Exactly, her foot just like st it, it almost looks like it's been, um, uh, 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 you know, what is it when you get really cold and it's, oh, yeah, uh, like frostbitten, yes, it, it almost looks like frostbitten immediately. And then she, like, she's come and she, it, it, she bounces off and she's like, she immediately lands and and like is 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 grabbing her foot just in disbelief, seeing that it's just this blackened horror show, yeah, and she's looking up at him like completely off guard and what what happens then yeah well uh great death uh he's what does he say to her yeah he's what, is he, what does he sound like even um i mean i i imagine he has a sort of like you are not type yeah, voice yeah like um, he like almost never speaks Yeah, I, I I wonder. It would be kind of interesting if there was a little bit of history between them too, because he was a prisoner. Um, oh, so I wonder if Janward was involved in imprisoning him at some point. Yeah, she, maybe she's overconfident because she's defeated him in the past. Yeah, and, and that's why she's like run. She's just running toward him. She thinks she knows what how this is going to go down. How she's just going to handle him. You know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so what so is he the says, sort of... Like, so he'll yeah. say, he probably says something like, um, uh, I don't know, like, that's that's not going to work this time, monk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something that, and then imagine, our audience can imagine something, a more sinister version of that. <laughs> I'm, I honestly, I, this is one of the things I'm really terrible at. <laughs> um, and... I want to say that like he's somehow able to like turn her through some horrible oh, magic. God. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. so I'm imagining that like you know he has spores that are like mind control spores or something like that. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And so he like as he like speaks this, and this is the reason why he doesn't talk so much is because when he speaks, these spores actually come out of him. And so he speaks, he says, you know, um, you, you, I, mm, something about like, you will be mine or yeah. something like that. As he does that, like you see these like these purple specks kind of like drifting out of his mouth and they Ooh, just so, like. So covid -y. Yeah. Oh my God. It's very like now. <laughs> um, and like, they just like, go into go toward her face and they enter into like sort of the orifices in her face and like her eyes sort of turn like purple let me let me and, add let me add a detail okay. here if i could yeah, um yeah. he he doesn't he speaks but then he he uh, man, uh, uh, this is making him super creepy but uh okay. he walks towards a pretty much defenseless jan word speaks yeah. and then he takes her hand and like kisses it and oh! Oh, he's that, awful. he's awful, right? And so oh, in that, God. and you know, it's and he's and he's like, "Good to see you again," or something, right? And like, yes. Uh, and, and and so in that moment, 
of just disgusting, you know, uh, creepiness. Uh, he he yeah. infects her. Uh, Dan Ward is now under the control of Divinia's forces. But one less well, less one foot, hopefully. So maybe. Well, not. I don't think it even matters to her anymore. Yeah. Uh. Well. Oh, okay. So, okay. So then. So then the. Uh, okay. So is there any? Is there any other one on ones that need to happen here? Well, so one thing that I do want to bring in here is that you created this wizard character who's there to observe. Yeah. From, uh, I think, I, from Paul something. I think I came up with the name you of did, it. You did, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember what it yeah. was, but... Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he has been observing all of this. Oh, Resclan. And... Resclan. Resclan. Yeah. That's right. Super high so, stats. Yeah. So Resclan, you know, has been sent to observe sort of what's going on in Paul Andra anyway. And so, of course, they are there. Um, he... To, and and seeing what's happening, uh, I think it's worth a roll to see if um, they decide to get involved here. What do you think? I I would like to see Rezcon maybe take on one of the bosses um, after they've defeated uh, uh, Tenazar and uh, and Janward. Well, so I don't because mm. there's not really anyone else worthy of Rezclan's energy except for Divinia at this point, right? Is there? Well, I I mean, Divinia is a special case, even though Rezclan has high stats. Like he's, I, I got something. I, I got something. Okay, what do you uh, got? I I think Rezclan's a wizard. Um, yeah, I think Rezclan is going to. I think this is how the. They're, they're, the monks are losing. The paladins are losing. Rezcon yeah. steps in to cast some kind of spell that just gives them that moment to, to like get away. Um, yeah, some sort of area of effect thing. I don't think yeah. he's going to fight anybody. He's not really there to fight anybody. Right, right. He's there to fight, but if he's, I think if he's seeing that stuff is like really bad and maybe there's bad powers there, he doesn't want those bad powers to win. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, okay. And so, yeah, so Rezcon is, you know, it's like some, yeah, some kind of thing that like, just like. Imagine him on a rooftop maybe yeah, or something. Yeah, right, exactly. Just watching, seeing yeah. everything going down, wants to balance the scales a little bit. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, maybe it's like a, it's like a strong wind. Um, well, I want, okay. Yeah, well, go ahead. I think we should roll to see if he's successful. Okay. Yeah. Well, because if he's not, <laughs> we sort of need a win here for the good guys. Well, uh, I mean, the dice are telling us who's the who's going to win here or not. So let's do a. I don't know if this is this. Let's do a DC one this time, and not an opposed one, because it's not against anything, right? It's just okay. Can you do this in this moment? Sure. Um, but let's make the DC, you know, fairly high. Yeah, um, like a fifteen. Oh, that's pretty high. Like I was thinking, like thir <laughs> thir thirteen, maybe. 13? Okay. Um, and so uh, he has to beat a 13, right? Yeah. But okay, let's, let's, and... let's give him a bonus of some kind. He's super Oh, come on. He's super smart. He's like 17 int. I, yeah, I just sort of think like it's a, it's, he's one person and these are, you know, multiple groups of people fighting. I think a 20 with DC 13 is reasonable. Or we could have it be, oh, this is complicated, but it could be a, a save for the bad guys. Oh, interesting. Against his spell DC. Um, I don't think they know what's happening though. Well, I guess it still could be a but save. To resist, but... but that would give him advantage then, right? right? So then uh, this is getting really technical. It's not really yeah, fun. Okay. Let's just say, I, I... let's just see if he does it. DC 13, okay. straight yeah, D 20. Here we go. Okay. A 10. Oh, no! So he's observing what's happening, and he's got his spell book, and he takes it out, and he's kind of looking through the spell book. And what it, he, you say he finds a particular spell that he wants, right? What was it? I, w I don't know. I was thinking some kind of gust of wind, something to just not not some, nothing to like injure anybody, but just to like g push people aside so that the just kind of like stun people enough to like allow for regrouping. It could be like a, th thing. a thunderous clap. It could be you know. Okay. 
So what happens that causes him to be unsuccessful here? I think it's Davinia. I think Davinia blocks it. Yes. Where is she in this fray? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you put her? Well, I would put her, you know, sort of, uh, you know, in the middle of things, giving orders to her forces. So, like, if you can imagine here's, you know, again, we have alt opposing uh, sides with, uh, like, physically, they're on opposite sides. Yeah. The, you know, the monks and the gentle fist compound. And then we have Divinia's forces in the middle. So I sort of imagine her in the heart of that, you know, just giving out orders. Maybe she's even flying or something she's riding know? some kind of beast or yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah yeah i like, like that like mm -hmm. a like an evil pegasus or some kind of like yeah what would be what would be up her alley i mean probably a pegasus so that because she's deceptive like she's fundamentally deceptive and so a pegasus would might might think might convince people that she is like good in yeah, some way right and so yeah i like that like something that would normally be associated with good but she's on its back instead and it's just kind of gliding over the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know. she can like, she can communicate through some magic with like Grey Death and with the Eviscerator and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. And 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 yeah, she's she's you know macro here. She's big picture thinking about. So she feels this spell coming and just yeah. like, waves it off. <laughs> yeah like it wasn't even a big thing and uh i think that um Rezclon, uh i think that he probably is like oh, okay this isn't my fight this is too much i'm gonna get out of here and head back to paul T tolnar or wherever yeah. the heck he was from for some reason it's toledo in my head <laughs> paul toledo, paul toledo. <laughs> <laughs> yep and back to paul toledo um <laughs> Uh, okay, so <laughs> I mean, Divinia's forces are looking pretty good, and I think they're turning their attention now. I think the monks they get the hell out of there once they see that Janward has been taken down, and you I, know she may chase them off. I think the monks would would fight to the death. No, do you think that they're going to fight Janward because that's who Grey Death sends toward them? Yeah, I think they would, would would try to save or free Janward, maybe. Mm, um, okay. And, and probably unsuccessfully, but... <laughs> well, and probably also, like, you know what? They are dedicated not to her, but to the ideals of the monastery. So if she turns, they know. And she's probably told them, yeah, you know, right. if I fall, you continue. Okay, all right. So they're going to keep going. Yeah, was there another monk that we had a name for? Yeah, there were, I think, a couple. All right, so they, so they <laughs> move on. The one just had a name for was recently defeated by the Eviscerator and is not in good enough shape to be fighting. Um, So this is it. I mean, unless Mandresa has a trick up her sleeve, like, she's got to close those doors. Well, let's let's uh, let's see if Janward is taken down by the monks or not. Okay, all right. Yeah. Let's see if she's taken out. So, um, do you want to roll for the monks, and I'll ro I'll roll. Uh, no, I'll ro roll for Jan. Or do you roll for the monks? Yeah, I'll be the monks. Um, okay. Just straight up. Uh, I think maybe they get a plus one because um, she's essentially possessed, and also because they have they have resolve in their values I and like that. in their you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. Give it to me. It's a four. Oh, 16 plus one. Okay, so yeah, so she comes at them, and she's this horrifying, possessed creature, but uh, it sounds like they're just able, I mean, there's enough of them. Right, they just they, get overwhelm her. Exactly, they've got their key powers, they, you know, they basically, you know, a bunch of them kind of crowd around her after they've uh, taken her down, and they, you know, they project key at her, and, and she just... Yeah. hits the floor she's unconscious what, the the power of many kind of you know they combine their they merge some magic somehow and yeah exactly yeah so okay so she's uh she's been taken down and the monks are still in play here yeah um okay so tell i mean me about the paladins tell me about what's going on over well, there they're there i mean tenazar is really the deal like there's there's only so upset is the paladin who came from the orcish fishing village who was a right. uh i forget what but uh tiefling maybe um 
and uh, and and so I think that's it's upset in the grandparent who are left. On that uh, well, Mendoza is there. I mean, and there's a there's security forces too. Yeah. I mean, they could they could you know they're I, I let's why don't we do like a general role for like the security forces against the Divinia forces. Okay. Uh, and just see where they're who's pushing who and. Okay, I'll roll for Divinia. All right. Divinia's got to have like a plus two here, oh, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I even even higher maybe if you want. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. Okay. All right. What do you do? What did you roll? Call three plus three. Uh, fifteen. Wait. Okay. So I rolled a thirteen plus three, plus so three. sixteen. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, it's yeah. Close. So it's close, actually, closer than we thought. Maybe because our, you know, head folks are kind of occupied with other things going on, like the Eviscerator and, sure. um, and Grey Death. And so it's just kind of like the grunts versus the grunts here. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, uh, there may be just more of them on Divinia's side, basically. Yeah, Mondresa's grunts are, are much better trained, but... Uh, mm -hmm. and, and Mandres is very smart and tactical um, and waited for an opportunity to send them out, but they're still just getting overrun just enough. Well, right. I mean, you know, they're a, uh, they're a security force, but they're not a huge security force, right. and they're not really, you know, there to go up against, like, a small army, basically. <laughs> right, exactly. But but so yet, like, uh, yet they hold their own for a while. <laughs> but um, And so they are just, at this point, we got to get to the, i mean they're just buying time for the for for the sailors to show up now so that's our sort of our our like potential deus ex machina right where there there's oh. just like this other force that's coming into play from the water um and maybe they're not powerful I, at I all but guess. <laughs> i don't know i i don't know that anybody that any sailors would even know what's up over here no because uh because they've gotten word from uh uh whatever the 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 ranger the sea ranger was oh, the sea ranger yeah so oh. so i'm imagining oh. that the sea ranger has has gathered a a small army also of uh interesting you know, okay uh, has gone around to all of the like little ports in the area has been has been doing this for like a couple days now seeing you know they they've seen kind of what's been shaping up in town okay and so they've spent their time just like getting these pirates over here and like getting uh -huh. the merchants over there and all these guys have some you know f troops and you know some calling in some favors just yeah just get and and also kind of reminding them that like hey you know things are decent right now if they if divinia gets to take over you like your livelihood is at stake like right. i think i described commerce, it in my video as oh say again commerce ceases yeah right um it's it's like it's like an independence day when they're just like anybody with a who knows how to fly like we all are just going to go up and attack the giant spaceship and like they have no chance right they're just average yeah. joes um, i just throw people at it but but this is but this group now comes into play as like yeah. it looks like all is lost and maybe all okay. is lost because all yeah. you have is a bunch of sailors showing up um, <laughs> yeah but let's give them a shot you know it, uh, so i think okay. that that's kind of i think maybe that's the the final role here. okay uh, okay it's just the people come in and can okay. the people are, are there enough of them are they you know just skilled enough that they can win the day yeah, I think so. We've got the sailors and pirates and the monks. Yep. And anybody who can pick up a pitchfork, basically. Right, right. right. Yeah, and so they're gonna just they they rally sort of as as you know Divinius forces have taken down the security uh, you know detail the forces and so forth. Um, that's when we have these other folks sort of entering in. Is that what's happening? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They, cause they, they get, because because uh, the Sea Ranger has had to kind of take the time to gather them, it takes mm -hmm. a little longer, but they show up, you know, sort of in the nick of time. And Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> so, all right, you roll for them. Yeah, I don't, I think they've got to have a disadvantage or something, right? Like, <laughs> I think, I think, um, yeah, I mean it's 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 a large amount of people, let's say. Right, yeah. It's a large amount of people. And, you know, especially the monks who um, you know, were able to uh take down Janward and kind of save her. Um, you know, there are people watching that, right? And um 
you can even imagine one of the monks is like, okay, <laughs> well, now you can imagine just like these civilians there, they see what's up and they just start joining the ranks of the monks. And as that's happening, you know, our sea ranger comes in and he's like, got room for one more or something. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he had high charisma, I remember. Yep, that's and, right. <laughs> uh, and like, you know, with like a, a wink and a like, you know, smirk, like he's like, is is this party accepting new guests or something? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh god! And, uh, they they they're just gonna just charge. Just a mass amount of people are gonna charge. Yeah, they're just gonna rush in. Okay. You know, there's sort of not really a, like a leader, right? It's just a right. It's just a mob. Just go for yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, what are you thinking for the roles here? Oh, Jesus. Um. I think the mob. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe the the numbers make help even things out. Yeah, I think I think they can. I think um, let's uh, let's yeah let's let's just oh, boy. I don't think it's gonna be two straight twenties. I think uh, I think Davinia's forces gets advantage. That, that works. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, roll. I'm rolling the blue die for the C team. Okay, okay. We got a chance. What's your roll? It's a 15. My high roll was a five. Wait, what? What was your... <laughs> what was My the other low one? roll was a three. Okay. You can add those up and you can't beat me. <laughs> so, um... Tell me what happens here, Emilio. This is like out of nowhere. This mass of people just like comes down and is just like, what happens? How is it that Davinia's forces somehow falter in this case? Yeah, it's so, oh, man, I mean, so it's it's very heroic. And, mm. you know, uh, there's so many movie scenes that I can recall that have this exact moment, but like, right. you know, it's over for the good guys. They, they've lost yeah. their three best fighter, two best fighters. Uh, yes. they're getting pushed back. They're like sort of up against the walls of the compound with nowhere to run. Yeah. Um, and, and just as like, you know, Wait, before you keep going. Yeah. Our, our C Ranger, he has to give a speech. He's got such high charisma. What is it? How does he rally the people? Uh, well, okay, so it's, uh, yeah, uh, okay, so he gathers everyone at the docks. He goes around, and he tells yeah. everyone, meet me at the docks uh, yeah. midday tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, you know, really important. You you know, you know me. I wouldn't mess around. Um, mm -hmm. And so everyone shows up. I got to give this guy a voice. So everyone shows up at the docks, and and. At first, you know, of course, it's like, oh, a couple people are straggling in. It doesn't seem like there's going to be enough people. And right. then, like, over the horizon comes, like, a bunch of ships. Uh, and, uh, and at this point, there's open fighting in the streets. And so you can hear the sounds of battle in the distance um, as these people are coming to the port. And so as they, as they pull in, uh, the ranger says – I never named him um, – he says, oh, you didn't name him? I forgot to name him. Oh, um, that's he says... Uh, like, but that's okay. But doesn't that like fit with this idea that the people are uprising? We don't even need a name for yeah. this guy. He is just one of many. And that's what he says. He says, look, I'm, yeah. I'm just one of you. By yeah. myself, by any of us by ourselves, we could never think of defeating evil like this. But together, like, look at how, how many of you came you know, yeah. you know, old and young, you know, men and women, uh, children are there. Maybe not children. Uh, well, I think families, children are there. families are there, right? You know, yeah. their 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 livelihood. You know, you you all came out to sacrifice to to for for the greater good of Palanvera, our home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is the one chance that we have to protect our place. This is our city this city does not belong to the gentle fist this city does not belong to divinia it doesn't belong to mandresa this is mm -hmm. our city mm -hmm. and uh then they just you know then just walks off yeah well i, I imagine like you know as he's sort of as his sort of you know group starts moving through the streets like 
more people are like joining more they're like sort of wondering what's going on they're yeah. hearing as they get closer to the battle you know everybody knows what's up and they know that this force is here to try to take on you know in a last sort of ditch effort yeah this you know these evil magics that are going on you know and more people start joining and then as they approach you know the the monks who are there after just sort of taking down their leader they see you know the energy that these people are bringing and uh they they know that you know this is this this is the group that they're going to be lending their power to so you can imagine right. even like you know, them laying hands on people and like yep. empowering the key and so forth right yes, empower, and, empower the people yes and then it's just this massive group of people and you can imagine sort of like divinia on her pegasus sort of looking down and just like seeing something that she had not accounted for yeah right exactly you never expect you know she had people that oh man this is so so relevant people that 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 thrive or that create fear mm. they, they 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 live in that like bullies they can't if you fight back against them like they they can't deal with that right they, if people they if people they get they don't even imagine it they yeah, don't imagine right. that fight back. they they see that their control is so great that people are so afraid of them that but whenever but when people kind of band together and like give for each other and like support each other like you can overcome great evil powerful evil you can imagine her eyes kind of like widening and she starts panicking and she just starts she's she said she's sending gray death she's sending the eviscerate she's sending the last of her forces you know which had now seen a lot of action right and they sure. just barely defeated the security forces exactly. right and so she just throws them at them and you know you see i mean the the people they're taking casualties here yeah. oh, you know yeah. Oh, yeah. but they continue to move forward it's like a flood through the streets and From as that's happening it's just like there's fighting and there's yelling and they're screaming and like just like they're 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 gonna roll over the eviscerator they're going to gouge out gray death eyes i mean they <laughs> are just brutal yeah. in their you know in their power basically yeah there's no stopping them and no. uh and 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 they overrun the forces and i think divinia decides to to run yeah i think so too i think she like her it's clear her plans are falling apart and she's afraid yeah and yeah. she just she gets the hell out of there. I, you, I even sort of imagine like, you know, maybe some people are shooting arrows at her and the oh, yeah. Pegasus like falls and like she crash lands and there are people coming at her. They're pulling at her, grabbing yeah, her hair yeah. and like some like cast some spell to like, just get them to like, you know, back off. And she just like runs like a coward through yeah. the alley. Yeah, she takes just, off and vanishes yeah. uh, to fight another day next December. Join us for <laughs> part two. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wow! And you know, you can imagine Slate being freed from his cage and like cradling his brother. Oh my God! The and, reckoning for Slate. Oh man! And just feeling like, you know, he was such a fool. And Mandresa, Mandresa coming out and you know being present, and also the grandparent being present mm -hmm. with them, and just sort of like mourning, and like the people sort of like you know, being around them and just sort of like, you know, there's like this mourning that's happening just amongst the crowd and everything, you know, mixed in with the celebrations as well. But this was like, this was not a good day for Paul Andra. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, I mean, it ultimately the the people were able to win, but but of yeah. course at, at a great cost. And I, yeah, I doubt that any of the main characters will see things sort of in the same way after this, those that are even left alive. Um, the, uh, things are going to change in Paul Anvra. Is that uh, the end of our this chapter of the Gentle Fist Saga, Emilio? It's, yeah, I think it sure is. I mean, I I couldn't have asked for a more compelling <laughs> final. It's like, and and the fact that the dice did it is so awesome because yeah, we could have we could have massaged this any way we wanted, but I I think we I hope 
you know, you let us know if we treated this fairly. And, uh, uh, you know, the Davinia's team had advantage on that last roll. And uh, unprepared, it, unprepared. It could have gone, it could have gone a lot of ways. Um, unprepared for the powers of people. But, it's, oh man, I just, I sort of love that. Because if I was writing this, I might have written it very similarly that, the, like, all the good guys die. Um, yeah. Until then, yeah, this last ditch, whatever. Um, it's, yeah, it's just like those deaths were very meaningful. Uh, got real Game of Thrones. I was thinking it was going to be more Harry Potter, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no story that I'm coming up with is going to be Harry Potter. <laughs> and that's that's why I love you, Christian. <laughs> No story that I'm part of. No, um, that's fantastic. Well, hey, congratulations, Emilio. We did it. We did it. Congratulations, Christian. Yes. Woo! This was a hell of a ride. Oh, man, that was really fun. <laughs> um, well, do you want to, like, uh, take us out, Emilio? Yeah, let's, let's yeah, say goodbye let's to everybody. Goodbye so to everybody. thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. For If you've watched all the 31 characters, that's awesome. If you want to go back, if you haven't caught some of them, you know, they're only like five, six minutes each. So definitely check them out. And stay tuned for a lot more fun stuff this year. Um, we're going to be doing some new episodes of Let's Roll Characters, maybe – streaming some more games you know we've got a wagadu part two coming up soon so yeah, yeah it's been a lot it, of fun it, this is the year that i'm gonna stream some dming as well for us emilio I, so I, i've been trying to convince you for a little while so i cannot wait it's gonna happen this year i'm so ready for that i hope you all are too thanks for tuning in uh i forget uh do some things roll Chip, subscribe yeah. button uh, i don't know what the go play some role playing go games. do some games jerks yeah. bye guys <laughs> bye